My name is Sadie, and today we're going to be learning how to make this abstract poster design in Blender and Daz. Starting in Daz Studio, we're going to go to Figures, and then we're just going to use the basic 8.1 mail. Once that loads in, we're not going to be doing anything to it, so we're just going to export it as is. Go File, Export, name it what you want, and save it as an OBJ. When you export, make sure you click on Write Separate Objects, and then hit Accept. After that exports, we're going to open up Blender. I'm going to set the resolution to 2000, not 200, 2000 by 2500. I'm going to go File, Import OBJ, and import the one we just made. We're going to scale it nine times and just zoom in on the face real quick. And then we're going to click on the eyebrows or the eyelashes and delete them. And we're going to click on the little tear on the eye and also delete it. You can see that we can't really see the eyeballs, so we're going to go into edit mode, change it to faces, select both eyeballs, hit control L, that'll select the linked, delete, and then faces. And if we exit back out, now we can see the eyes. And after we have that, I'm going to do shift A, we're going to add a cube, I'm going to size it up until it covers most of the body to view it from the side and we're going to move it up so it's cutting everything except the head now that we have both things made we're going to click on the cube and then click on the figure and the new control minus on the nums pad and that should pull it out as you can see it cut everything out except for the head so select the head go to modifiers and apply the modifier once that's applied you can delete this cube and right click on the head to set the origin geometry and we're just going to scale this up more. We're going to go back to viewport shading for this next part and we're just going to move this up into the corner and we're just going to duplicate this four times. After we have this duplicated we're going to add another cube, shift A, mesh, and then click on cube, scale it up so it's around the same size as the head. And we're going to do the same thing with this, we're going to use it to cut. So we're just going to duplicate this and scale it around so that we can cut four different sort of faces out of it from all the different angles. Now that we have all of those, click on the cube and then click on the person and then do control minus. You'll see sometimes that it doesn't really bool it correctly and it looks really weird, so just click on the object and go over here and then change it from exact to fast, and that should fix it. And then do the same thing on all the other ones. If the cube's not big enough like this one wasn't, we're just going to scale it up so that it covers everything real quick. Will this one do it? Yeah, that one will go all the way through. And then select these, control minus. Take a little longer because it's a diagonal cut. Control minus on this one. Oop, click, click. Control minus. Oh, I already have it. So let's go over here and change this to fast. And that should fix our problem. Scale this one up on the Y again so that we got all these covered. Cool. Now you can see all these cuts. So we're just going to go to the meshes and apply it. It's going to make us make it a single data before we apply it on every single one. This might take a moment, so it has to think a little bit when it's applying these modifiers. And the last one, apply. Now that we have all these applied, we can go through and delete all these cubes because they're unnecessary. If we go to camera view, you can see for some reason this one has a weird vertex over here, so we're just going to go into edit mode, switch to vertexes, and then just delete this one vertex over here real quick. All right. Now that we have this, all we're going to do is just duplicate them around and rotate them a bunch to make it look uh, interesting. I'm going to get rid of this other vertex real quick and then get to that, so I'm just going to speed through this next part. Uh, just do it up to your discretion. 
just fill up the whole entire canvas basically and give it a sort of interesting composition. Okay, now that we have the whole canvas sort of filled up, all the spaces, there's not really much gaps. It doesn't matter if there's background space, but I prefer it to be all the way filled in. We're gonna switch back to rendered view. You can see there's a couple more gaps up here, so I'm just gonna fill these in real quick with these faces. All right, now that we have all the gaps filled in, we're gonna do Shift A, and we're gonna go light, and we're just gonna add a point light. Make sure you can you can toggle this up here to show your overlays so we know where everything is. Move this light forward. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn it up to 100 and just move it around. Duplicate it with Alt D and just make a couple copies of this light so we get a couple light sources. Now that we have all these light sources, it's looking a little better. It's lit up. I do Shift A, add a mesh, and it's just gonna be a cube. Scale it up a little bit, go over to your materials, add a new one, and we're going to go to glass. Turn the roughness all the way down. This is going to give us a sort of refraction effect. If you select the cube, and then you can rotate it around and see how it's refracting everything. You can scale it around. We're just going to add a couple cubes around here and rotate them around separately so we get some sort of different refractions going on probably around five, four or five cubes to do whatever you feel would be the best for your scene. Once you get the cube set, it's already giving some sort of refraction, but we're gonna make it up even more by adding a mesh icosphere. Turn the subdivisions up to five and shading it smooth. Size this up a decent bit and we're gonna do the same thing by making it a glass material and turning the roughness all the way down. Now we're gonna do another step on this by adding a solidify and putting it at like 0.6. And if you see now we get sort of a banding effect with it depending on where we place it. So I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple times and size it up. One reason we're getting some sort of gray in this instead of black is if you go to your world, you can see the background color is dependent on that, so I'm just gonna put the background on black. It looks really dark right now, but that's okay because we can just go back to our point lights and we can just move them around and position them differently, maybe turn it up from 100 to 1000, and then it's gonna be really bright. We just have to reposition them so it interacts with the glass in a way and lights your scene how you like. I have three, you could do as many lights as you want, or as little lights as you want. I'm actually gonna do four because I want this corner up here to be more bright. Now that we got the lights, I'm gonna actually duplicate this orb again and just scale it up and then move it back on the Y so I get a little bit of diffraction up here. And we have this. And that's basically how you achieve this effect. You can go through and uh, add different objects any one of the basic messers and just put them as a glass and it'll look pretty good. Um, thank you for watching. I'm sorry it took me a while to make a tutorial. I've been dealing with a lot so I've been trying to get back on it and I got a couple more ideas coming up. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. If you make something, send it to me on Instagram. I'd like to see it. Uh, hope you have a good night. Go create something.